Would you have clicked the link to this video if you had to revise for an exam tomorrow? What kind of question is that? Well, that is a circular question. Now, you are already familiar with two types of questions that you've probably seen in psychiatry and they've been introduced to you. One of them is closed questions, where the way the question is asked demands a very narrow, concise answer. For instance, are you feeling cold? Other questions are open questions, where it's a kind of question worded in such a way that invites a variety of answers. Uh, for instance, if you ask, how are you feeling? The answer might be, I'm feeling cold, but it might be something other. You know that you need to use a combination of both in order to conduct an interview. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to a much more complex version of questions to use in interviews, uh, circular questions. So to begin with, we will uh, define what a circular question. It is a kind of question that invites the responder to answer from a perspective which is not the one that they're holding at the time that they're talking to you. So let me give you an example of each. So you could start an interview by asking, how are you feeling? That's an open question. And the answer might be, mm, I'm feeling okay. You might follow that with a close question, such as, are you feeling angry? Uh, and the answer might be a narrow one, uh, for instance, no, I'm not feeling angry. So you have there an open question and a closed question. Now, a circular question would be something inviting that person to take a different perspective when answering the same question. It would be something like this. If I asked your mother whether you are feeling angry right now, what do you think she would tell me? And the answer might be, well, she would tell you, I'm not angry, but I'm about to get angry. You see, that is a question where we're inviting the interview to describe how he's feeling, but from another perspective, that of this hypothetical mother. So this person has now introduced a difference between what he tells you he's feeling, I am not feeling angry, and this imaginary perspective. What you have now done is to follow an initial question where you invite to take a different perspective with another question that inquires about the difference between these two perspectives that he's given us. So the follow-up question, that's the second question about the difference, is what makes this a circular process. Okay, so there are two aspects to a circular question. The first one is that the question invites the person to take a different perspective when answering and there is a follow of a circular process where the difference between the two perspectives is explored and brought into the conversation. So let's look at these two characteristics in a little bit more detail. First, look at the ways in which we can invite someone to take a different perspective. We can invite them to take the perspective of someone who might be in the room with them. Um, so in the previous example, mother might be sitting there and um, with them and you might ask them, what would your mother think whilst mother is there? It's a way of communicating with her as well, but more about this later. We could also ask them to take the point of view of a hypothetical person who is not there. Also, that hypothetical person might be themselves, but in another situation. So we could say, if you had seen yourself like you are now two years ago, what would you think you would say about how you're feeling? So we can bring the person in the future or in the past, or we could ask a person to think of themselves answering the question in a different context. For instance, we could ask, if you are sitting with your family, like you're sitting now with me, but instead of sitting in this room, you were at home, would you feel angry? And the fourth way is to ask them to look at the context from outside and to look at other people in it, of everybody here in the room, who would think you are the angriest and ask them to rank them in the room. It's another way of, of forcing them to see themselves from the perspective of other people. So as you can see, there are many ways of inviting people to take different perspectives. 
The second aspect is the idea of circularity. Circularity is when we ask a series of questions, but the series refers to the question that you've asked before. So each question builds on the answer to the previous question. And it is still a sequence, but is no longer lineal, but is circular, because it requires one question to follow the next one. It's a sequence, but it's circular. So for instance, the example we used before, remember? The patient said, I don't feel angry, but my mother, if she was here, she would think I am angry. So we could ask, what is it about you that would make your mother think you're angry when you think you're not? Yes, so that's a question that follows from the first one. It feeds back the information and that makes it into a circular sequence. So to sum up, a circular question involves asking a question that invites an answer from a different perspective. And when this question is followed with another question that explores the meaning of the difference between the two perspectives. Circular questions are a powerful tool. They can be used to gather information, to refine what people mean, uh, but also they're very powerful tools for change. They are crucial in motivational interview and they can be used strategically in order to promote change. I use them often as part of my assessment interview, not as a family therapist, but wanting to change the dynamics of a family, but as a psychiatrist trying to get a psychiatric history and, and uh, I find them really helpful. You might use them to take a um, psychiatric history or you might use them to, to take um, a medical history. You can use them in all kinds of situations. Just, just ask yourself, what do I know now about circular questions that I didn't know at the start of the video? Thank you.